Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of Dogs and Hogs. This is going to be the hogs, the swine. Uh, part two was kind of like on Egypt and the sin of Ham. Uh, and ties into a lot of other things. Uh, I tried to load part two. Uh, the video to BitChute and wouldn't it, it it would load well it technically it would load but it wouldn't stay it wouldn't I don't know all I know is it took me a while to uh, I, I uploaded the file and then when I tried to post it it said no file chosen so I don't know if I'm locked out of the account other people were loading files. There were new videos being posted, and I did this twice. So I don't know, I don't know what's going on. And I send uh, BitChute ten bucks a month. It's not a lot, but you know, it's better than what a lot of other people probably send, which is nothing. So I don't know if uh, this is just a one-time deal. They're having trouble, or what? But uh, I am on archive dot org a r c h i v e dot org i'm posting things to there i don't know how long that's going to last uh their headquarters is in san francisco what does that tell you but uh yeah we'll see what happens all right so uh part three swine hogs dogs and hogs part three let's Close this puppy out. Uh, let's see. In Leviticus 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So swine, or pigs, or hogs, are not clean food for God's people. Is it a salvation issue? Absolutely not. And we'll go more into that later. However, they are God's garbage can. Pigs will eat anything. You could take the most rotten, maggot-infested dead animals, and they'll eat it. Uh, you know, people are like, well, you know, God cleansed all the dirty, the unclean meats. Well, would you really want to eat mice, rats, vultures? Uh, pigs belong in that category. I mean, let's face it. They are, uh, years ago, I read where the uh, Planned Parenthood was not only selling body parts of the aborted children to the medical industry, but that anything that wasn't sold to them, they sold to pig farmers. And what do you think the pig farmers did with them? Yeah, they fed them to the pigs. So I don't know how true that is. I've never seen it with my own eyes. But, uh, you know, all I know is abortion clinics... Every day at the end of the day at closing, the FedEx trucks will make a pickup. What do you think they're picking up? They're not picking up their uh, empty soda cans, that's for sure. So, all right. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 8. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, divideth the hoof yet cheweth not the cove, cud, cud it is unclean unto you, ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. All right. Now, in Matthew 15, 11, Jesus said, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. And no, we're not talking about a man spitting or throwing up. No. It's the words that come out of a man's mouth. That 
is what defiles a man. All right, let's take a look at Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, what was a centurion? Uh, it's a, a Roman soldier. Verse 2, he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come, come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So we're talking Simon Peter here, the Apostle Peter, you know. Verse 6, He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. So evidently, he is some kind of an officer in the Roman army. And when he had declared all these things unto the him, them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. All right, so... Peter falls into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowl of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. All right, so here it is. All these unclean type animals are coming down in the sheet. And there comes a voice, and it says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice. In other words, three times this happened. And the vessel received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which he had seen, should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was named Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Ah, three men. Remember this, this sheet came down thrice, three times? Three times, three men. Make the connection there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom that ye seek. What is the cause thereof ye have come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Ah, so Bob translation would be, hey, Peter, uh, come with us and preach the gospel to Cornelius. Well, that's the general idea. Then called 
he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Ah, listen carefully. Here's the interpretation of that sheet and the unclean beasts. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You see, your lying pastors will say, well, Peter was told that God cleansed the unclean animals, that now you can eat them, no problem. But that's not the, the interpretation. The interpretation is, they were these guys were of the Italian band. They probably ate pork and, you know, Lord knows what they had eaten in the past. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes, the words that comes out of the man's mouth. Okay? Verse 28, And he, Peter, said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into unto one of another nation. But God, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner, by the seaside, who, when he cometh, he shall, uh, I'm sorry, and when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, which they slew, which they slew and hanged on a tree. What? But I was always told it was a Roman Catholic church. I'm, I'm being facetious here. Verse 39, Acts 10, 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they, what's Peter talking about? The Jews and Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. No, it wasn't Pilate, it wasn't Rome. Verse 40, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, what name is that? Jesus. 
that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on that the Gentiles, well, that word Gentiles is same word that sometimes is translated as nations. What nations? I believe the nations of Israel, but, you know, if you want to believe all the nations, well, go ahead. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, languages, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Oh yeah. That's the gospel being preached there. Jesus died, rose again for the remission of sins and sits on the right hand of the side on the right hand side of God. Oh yeah. Now, please understand what you ate in the past does not make you common or unclean before the Lord. Like Jesus said, it's not what goes into the mouth, it's what comes out of the mouth. All right? Personally, I think eating anything to do with a pig is unhealthy. And if that story is true about um, aborted babies being fed to pigs, does that make us cannibals? You know? I, I don't know. I don't know if that tr story is true. Um but uh, a lot of this stuff I read a long, long time ago. So, you know, I don't know if it's true. But, uh, all right. But pigs, swine, uh, there's not very many things spoken of kindly in the Bible about them. Matter of fact, I can't find anything. But how about Proverbs 11.22? As a jewel of gold... In a swine's snout, all right, so a, a piece of gold jewelry in a pig's nose, all right, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. What does that mean? That means a, a, a fair, beautiful woman that doesn't have discretion, in other words, like a whore, I guess, um, is like a beautiful jewel in a snout of a pig, a pig's nose. You ever seen a nose jewelry? You know, a nose ring or whatever, or nose, like an earring in a woman's nose? Nah, I, I never got it, you know. The millennials do that. Uh, I never got that. I never saw that in, when I was in high school. Well, not of the girls that I knew personally, but... Uh, the only people I know that wore nose rings and that kind of stuff were in Africa. But, yeah, I've seen pictures. Never been to Africa. But, uh, so a beautiful fair woman, which doesn't have discretion, is like a, a piece of jewelry in a pig's nose. So, uh, in Isaiah 65... It talks about, uh, in verse 4, you can read Isaiah 65 if you want, but uh, it talks about those that remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, the cemetery, right? Which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels. Uh, Lord doesn't speak kindly of that, you know? So, I don't know. But uh, I was, um, all I know is I'm going to show you some things about um, swine. You can also look up Isaiah 66 and verse 17. And, you know, you can look the verses before and after. Uh, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, 
eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So that doesn't sound very good, does it? But um, I wonder if there's a spiritual component to that. Now remember, in uh, part one of this three-part series, Jesus in Matthew 7, verse 6, Jesus said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you or tear you to pieces. Now, if you look at the pictures of uh, hogs or swine, um, they got tusks. Uh, big old teeth. And uh, like I mentioned, if you ever watched Old Yeller, that Disney movie, uh, Old Yeller got ripped apart by the herd of pigs. Um, uh, somebody had mentioned to me that they thought that perhaps domestic hogs or pigs were a genetic hybrid between humans and wild boars. I don't know how true that is, but they can take a pig's, uh, a domestic pig's heart and use the valve and put it into a human. And they can take human organs and put it inside of a pig to keep it alive. Uh, and they've used pig's blood for humans. Uh, there's a lot of medical stuff going on. There are some genetic, similar, very genetic similarities between a domestic pig and humans. Have you ever heard of swine flu? Uh, there's diseases that pigs can get that they can transmit to humans. We don't get diseases from bears. Uh, you know, yeah, they say that we can get some diseases from various animals, you know. But pigs are really high up on the list in the number of diseases because supposedly their physiology is very similar to humans. So at least one person has wondered, you know, were domestic pigs a, a hybrid of humans and wild hogs, boars? I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me. You know, there's so much evil with the fallen angels and their advanced technology, considering our level of technology, you know, the average human, uh, not compared to the Lord, but, you know, not much surprises me anymore. And besides, you know, the Bible says the end times would be like uh, in the days of Noah. Well, in the days of Noah, they had all those giants running around. And if you listen to the legends of basically every culture in the world that has writing, uh, every culture in the world has legends of giants. You know, Jack and the Beanstalk. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. And they all were uh, cannibals, which uh, I understand to be a contraction between Canaan as in the Canaanites, and Baal, or ba yeah, Baal, the uh, the false heathen satanic god. So Canaan, Baal, cannibal, eating of human flesh. Supposedly the giants killed, cooked, and eat humans or mankind. Not a good thing. And there's not too many. Uh, uh, there's not too many races in the world that practice that on a, uh, a, a regular basis. So, I mean, there has been times uh, people have resorted to cannibalism in emergency situations like the uh, Donner Party uh, in California in the winter. Um, there was a song written about... Uh, Timothy in the early 70s about a plane crash up in the mountains. I think it was in the Andes. Uh, 
But um, I think Africa is about the only country that I know of that uh, practices cannibalism on a normal, regular basis. So I don't know. All right, so give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So, I mean, are they actually talking about going to a pig farm and throwing down a pearls, and uh, or is this a figure of speech? I think it's a figure of speech, but hey. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 8. Verse 21, And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer, or allow, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. In other words, let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. What's a tempest? It's a, it's a storm. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Can you imagine that? You're in the middle of a big storm. Waves are crashing over the ship. The ship's taking in water. You're thinking, oh boy, we're going we're gonna to drown out here. The ship's going to go down. Jesus gets up, rebukes the wind, and it's calm. And there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Well, I'll tell you what manner of man he is. He's God manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Just got into an argument with somebody uh, over the internet about this. They're telling me that Jesus is just a man. No. Sin fell upon all mankind. Jesus had to be sinless God. If Jesus was born a man, then he was born with sin the same as all the rest of us, and he's not the Messiah then. So that can't be true. Jesus has to be sinless God manifest in the flesh, which is why the virgin birth. So that the original sin of the flesh does not pass upon him. That's why he could rebuke the wind and it would be calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Verse 28, Matthew 8, 28. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Geter, uh, Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, two possessed men with devils, coming out of the tombs. You ever heard of going to the graveyard at night on Halloween? Yeah, because the spiritually dead hang out with the physically dead. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Exceeding fierce. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. Ah, why are they talking about a herd of swine? 
Well, we're going to find out. Verse 31. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer or allow, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, in other words, they were cast out of the two men that, um, that were possessed with the devils. They, the devils, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. You know, even the herd of swine had enough sense to know that they would rather be dead than to be possessed of a devil. Think about that. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Devil-possessed swine. Huh. Is there a spiritual application here not to eat swine? that possibly eat dead babies? I, I don't know. Something to think about. Verse 33. And they that kept them, kept what? The pigs. And they that kept them fled and went their way into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. Hey, uh, Jesus, uh, would you do us a favor and get out of here, please? I mean, really? You know, that must have scared them. Because these people, I'll guarantee you, were not righteous. Because if they were righteous, they'd be proclaiming the miracle that Christ did. So, all right, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 15. Oh, let's uh, start at the beginning. Verse 1, Luke 15, 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Uh, then drew near unto him all the Republicans. Uh, well, that's a, yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's not the Republicans. Uh, people, that only makes sense if you're an American, I guess. That's one of our political parties. The Republicans and the Democrats. Yeah. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees, which Pharisee is a denomination of the Jews, and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he rejoiceth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And who's the great shepherd of the sheep? Christ, right? Verse 7, I say unto you that likewise joy, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no Repentance. Uh, joy in heaven. Yeah, because the angels in heaven will rejoice, but the fallen angels that are cast down to earth, they're not rejoicing. No, they're probably crying. Verse 8. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver... Why ten pieces of silver? Why ten? Well, remember when Israel and Judah split? You had the ten northern tribes of Israel? Yeah, the ten lost tribes. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. 
Jeremiah 31, 31. God will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I'm paraphrasing. But uh, the ten lost tribes, ten pieces of silver. Come on, make the connection here. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And who's this woman? The church, I think. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. The angels of God, and then you got the angels of the devil. Well, not the same, right? Verse 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. Now, I think these two sons represent Judah and Israel. Let's see if you can guess which one is which. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followeth me. And he divided unto them his living. In other words, uh, Father, you're going to give me an inheritance. Can you give it to me now? Verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Yeah, he uh, blew everything he had on wine, women, and song. A life of sin. Sounds like the first half of my life. Yeah. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Now, is there a famine of food? Only? Or is there also a famine of hearing the word of God? Perhaps. There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Yeah, he wanted to have something to eat. Physical meat? Spiritual meat? Take your pick. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So in other words, the pigs were eating better than he was. And when he came to himself, in other words, when he came to his senses, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. Ah, who is this? Is this Israel? Israel comes to their senses and says, I will arise and go to my father in heaven. Well, that's verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. You know, that's some of the words that the Lord loves to hear from our mouths. Father, I have sinned. Those are some of his favorite words to hear from our mouths. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran 
and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Is this the marriage supper of the lamb? The white robe washed in the blood of the lamb that we read in the book of Revelation? I think so. Can you think of a better robe than that? I can't. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Is this the marriage supper of the lamb? I think so. I think it's very representative of that. For this my son was dead. Israel, were they not dead? Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son, Judah, now his elder son was in the field, as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked, What in the world is going on here? Oh, well, that's the Bob translation. And asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, what's a harlot? A whore. Which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he, the father, said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all, all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. You see, Judah stayed with the Lord, but Israel ran off to be with harlots, became a spiritual whore. And I'm not talking about that little cesspool over in the Middle East. Think about this. Israel and Judah, people. It makes sense to me. I hope you get it, too. All right, let's keep going. Even the pigs were eating better than Israel, the cast-off who was divorced. Oh, yeah. So, does that make sense? Matthew 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again, and rend you. All right, go to Revelation chapter 7, and verse 9. After this I beheld in lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. Ah, is this the robe that the Father put on the prodigal son? Perhaps. Clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. 
And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the thrones on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. How about Matthew 22, verse 1? And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Who's the king? God the Father. Who's the son? Jesus, who is Christ. And by the way, Christ is not his last name. So the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding that they and they would not come. Yeah, come to the marriage. Again he sent forth other servants saying, "Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. In other words, it was like a joke to them. And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Who were the servants? The prophets. Who were the servants? The priests. Who were the servants? the apostles, and the disciples. You know, uh, in the Old Testament, the prophets had a very, very, very short lifespan when the country was evil. Yeah. Because when you went before the king and told him he was evil and God was mad at him, you generally didn't live very long. Sort of like having dirt on the Clintons. Yeah. And that's not really a joke. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the, her the, but, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was angry. He was P.O.'d. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. But those servants went out in, unto, into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests." And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Ah, somebody didn't have the robe, the white robe washed in the blood of the lamb that we just read in Revelation, right? Seven, I think it was Revelation seven. Yeah, he didn't have on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, friend. How camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. What can you say to the king? What can you say? 
Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Oh, yeah. You know, when you read uh, John chapter 2, um, the first, I believe the first recorded miracle of Jesus was the turning of the water into wine at, at the marriage of Cana. Think about that. I mean, there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. Think about it. He turned the water, the living water, into wine, his blood, at the wedding, the marriage, the wedding, the marriage of the Lamb's bride, the, the church. You know, think about it. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, for her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came down, uh, and a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And guess what? That's what the purpose of the tribulation is going to be. It's going to make the wife ready. The Lord wants to have a bride without spot or blemish. Do you want the things of this world or do you want the things of Christ? Do you want the things of Christ more than your life? Would you die for the faith? Rome used to feed Christians to the lions. And the you-know-whos used to put Christians to death, saying it was a heresy. Well, to Judaism, yeah, it's a heresy. Do you want the things of the Lord more than anything else in this world? Think about it. I've read before, it says, you know, everybody thinks that uh, the, the Lord comes back on a rescue mission to save his church. No, no, no. The Lord comes back when the church is ready, his bride. When she has given up everything in this world and wants to be with him more than anything else, he'll come. But until then... He's going to have to purge the church of all the worldly things. Read Revelation chapter 2. Read Revelation chapter 3. The churches. There was only, I think out of the seven churches, there was only two of them that the Lord was pleased with. The other five he wasn't pleased with. One of them, he said, you're not cold and you're not hot. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. Does that sound like a bride that's ready for her husband? No. No. Let us glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife 
hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Not our righteousness, his righteousness, Christ. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And verse 10, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Boy, I could almost make a teaching out of that. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of of prophecy. Wow, the words of Jesus are the spirit of prophecy. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. So, I hope you learned something. This is the end of dogs and hogs, swine, technically. I hope you learned something. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father. And his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.